Okay, I'll be honest. All right, I'll be honest. I dump my Ethereum for a lot of things. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I do for a lot of different altcoins. I get rid of my Ethereum. That's what you do. You buy the altcoins with the Ethereum, right? That's, that's how it works. But in this specific case, I got rid of a lot of Ethereum. I got, I got rid of a lot of Ethereum for uh, UFO gaming. Um, and it's for good reason. I think UFO gaming is going to outcompete Ethereum. And I think there's going to be a massive super cycle altcoin buzzword cycle. I do think this is true. Even though this is a buzzword, I do think it's true. So in this video, we're going to be going over Bitcoin, of course, the altcoin cycle. And then I'm going to hit it home with a UFO gaming review and why I purchased so much. Keep watching. What's going on, everybody? Alex back with another video. And today we're going to be primarily talking about UFO gaming. This is a metaverse, you know, play gaming token uh, that's recently been getting some buzz. It serves a pretty good percentage of my altcoin portfolio. So I want to break down the specific reasons why I think it's lucrative. Now, excuse my energy. I am coming off of COVID. So if I say something stupid, well, I'm stupid or probably not. So subscribe to the stupidest uh, channel on YouTube because I have COVID or not. Don't do it. It doesn't matter. Also, if you could do me a favor, if you look over here on Twitter, I actually have this tweet here. Okay. I want to, I want to scroll down. If UFO community gets this to 1k retweets, I'll buy more UFO. So although I already have a lot, you know, I do want to support the community. So head on over to Alex on crypto on Twitter, uh, where I type stuff and speak my emotions and probably not emotions, but not financial advice on the internet. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get my Twitter up. So Let's go into some Bitcoin here, because obviously if Bitcoin's not doing well, or at least moving sideways, if you know, the altcoin market's probably not going to do well. Um, so as you can see here, we're looking at the, you know, Bitcoin daily stock to flow price. Now, very interesting stuff here because stock to flow is obviously a viral chart, right? You know, people, uh, you know, submit to it. It basically takes in consideration how much Bitcoin is flowing on the market uh, in comparison to the stock, right? So basically it's the decrease issuance. And what that means is, the amount of Bitcoin that comes out every 10 to 15 minutes with a block reward is cut in half every four years, right? So that means there's less uh, Bitcoin flow coming on the market. And uh, Plan B got famous basically uh, by making this chart called the stock to flow ratio, Bitcoin stock to flow ratio. And it basically kind of predicts uh, Bitcoin's price. So it's interesting because I would say that the cryptocurrency market now, maybe, you know, in the beginning of the cycle in the bear run, it's catalyzed by a decrease of issuance. But I think now and I will make something for you guys. I'm putting together some charts and stuff like that. I'm putting together some models. I'm testing things, um, but I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say that now it's uh, catalyzed by utility um, and it's specifically catalyzed by utility from the altcoin market. So I think Bitcoin, although uh, moved the markets, I think it's power is getting less and less. And, and we know this because you can just simply look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. It's going down. Uh, it's been forever on a downtrend. <laughs> and, you know, uh, all coins take up 60% of the market, 60 something or whatever, uh, or close to 60%. So that means, in my personal opinion, although the you know market starts with Bitcoin decrease issuance, I think the utility ends the market. Uh, so we're going to be coming up with some charts that I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in the future. Um, but it's interesting because even if we look at just the stock of flow, which only takes in consideration the decrease of issuance, we should still see 100K BTC. It's just not happening exactly when they said it was, right? It doesn't mean that it's invalidated. As you can see here, um, you know, to be honest, that was a little attempt to clarify 100K average. This cycle, uh, this is regression analysis. He's basically saying the stock to flow model is intact. So, you know, he was making predictions it's going to be 100K by the end of the year. He was like right with most of the predictions. So it is what it is. Again, at the end of the day, guys, it's not really the chart that's important. It's the narrative behind the chart, right? Like plan B, he did well with the chart. That's great. But his biggest accomplishment was his 1.9 million followers, right? Um, and the fact that people accepted this chart and accepted the narrative behind this chart is more important than the actual chart itself. I want people to understand that. Uh, super, super important. Uh, numbers don't always represent everything in life. Also, if we look over here, you could see that we have the 10 day SMA realized profits. Okay. Basically blue zones signal bottoms are near and we've been in this pretty uh, long blue zone here. Uh, so hopefully we can get a bottom very soon with Bitcoin's price. Also, if we look at this, it's really interesting. If we look at the first cycle, kind of have the golden ratio here uh, being bounced on 
it looks very similar to this cycle here. I'm just showing you guys evidence. Also, I think this is like one of the biggest reasons why Bitcoin's price increases. It's not only the decrease in issuance, it's also the supply shock. So the breakdown of BTC held on exchange wallets. You can see that only 6.2% of the circulated supply is on exchange wallets. That means the other 90, what, 93.8% is held by people or lost in a cold storage wallet somewhere. Obviously, this allows Bitcoin to increase in price because it's scarcity element. You know, especially big time people with a lot of money, like they can't even buy Bitcoin without moving the price because of how small the amount of Bitcoin is on the centralized exchanges. They even have to get OTC bots to look for the highest liquidity depth um, on multiple exchanges just to buy Bitcoin without moving the price. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because this is one of the best elements of Bitcoin, scarcity, right? And the fact that we only have 6.2% of the circulating supply on centralized exchanges, it just adds to my case. I think Bitcoin is very undervalued. It's very undervalued. We could see an expanding cycle in my personal opinion. Um, this is also just kind of highlighting what we saw earlier where we have kind of like this golden ratio here of uh, bouncing off that. Hopefully we get the, you know, the move to the upside. And then I know a lot of people hoped for the Christmas rally, uh, but uh, we didn't have it. And this kind of adding to what I've been saying in a lot of different videos, I think it's going to be towards the end of January, guys. It's going to be towards the end of January. We're going to see something move a Bitcoin's price. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to talk about it in this video why it doesn't matter, because all coins have been moving regardless of Bitcoin's price. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to explain very briefly uh, something called peer-to-peer -peer technologies. Now, I know I said this over and over again, but we have this uh, report that just came out that a lot of people have been talking about. It's basically saying over 50 countries on planet Earth have banned Bitcoin or regulated it really bad, right? And this adds to the case that keeps saying to you guys a lot, like over and over again, no matter if they ban it, they cannot stop it. It's a peer-to-peer -peer technology. It runs by me and you, not by a centralized entity. So this is adding to what I'm saying. And not only that, but like even this, like there's been a lot of negative press on El Salvador's president and how he's forcing people to adopt Bitcoin and forcing people to adopt his wallet um, and there's also reports and claims, as you can see from here, um, of people saying that their Bitcoin disappeared on the wallet. This is the beauty. This is the beauty of peer-to-peer -peer technology is that although this guy maybe, I don't know, allegedly forced people to use his wallet and then he's robbing people with his wallet. Because if you read it, it basically says that his wallet's not open source, so nobody can verify anything. So... Although we have these centralized entities that force people into crypto, whether that's uh, government forcing people to use their uh, digital currency or their you know, stable coin, right? People ultimately wisen up, right? They wisen up and then they start using the actual peer-to-peer -peer version, okay? So they can get in a bad way. People are always like, oh, you know, the United States are gonna come out with their own digital currency. It's gonna be end of the world, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, that's probably a good thing. Like, although it's a bad onboarding ramp, people eventually wisen up and understand that they need to be using a peer-to-peer -peer technology. So Bitcoin's virtually unstoppable. Macro environment has never been better for Bitcoin success. Um, the peer-to-peer -peer nature of Bitcoin allows it to be sustainable regardless of whatever market. Even if we go into a full-on bear run, Alex is completely incorrect, right? We go into a full-on bear run. If you guys wait a couple of years, it does not matter. You will win as long as you stay in this market for a long period of time. Now, let me justify altcoin season very briefly because I think it's happening, I really do. Now, if we look at Bitcoin's price, you can see that we've basically been trying to get out of this downtrend, and in recent history, we did do that. Now, um, if we bring it over here, right, I've made the case that the manipulation that we got from here was the same manipulation we got from here. It just happens to be that we had a less of a dumping effect if people are wising up. Um, you know, whoever is manipulating the market, the single actors can't dump it as much as they used to. Um, so we had this downtrend very similar here, all right? Very similar to the line I drew over there. Now, once we broke up, which is what we basically did right here, once we broke up, right, we had to get over this kind of hurdle here to really confirm a bull run. So we're in the same boat. We have to get over like kind of this hurdle here. Um, and if you think about it, <laughs> it's very interesting. But if we do get over that hurdle, we're like really close to all time high, which gives me, again, a very bullish sense. It's like, look, we're talking about breaking all-time high. That's the conversation right now, right? So don't take your eyes off the prize. This is a dump. It is scary, but this is not the end of the bull run. We are making a trend to the upside, in my personal opinion. Now, 
Regardless of that fact, I mean, altcoins have been benefiting like crazy, right? Regardless of where Bitcoin goes, look at this. Top 100 altcoins versus Bitcoin dominance. So when this chart goes up, we have 100 altcoins, the top ones, doing better than Bitcoin. And you can see we've been making this trend to the top, and it looks like we're probably going to break out. It looks like we're probably going to break out. If I put up core market cap today, or coin gecko, whatever you want to call them, um, you could see that altcoins are clearly just destroying everybody. Look at look at the last seven days. Look at Phantom, 62% Ave, Kadena, Cosmos. Like altcoins are just obviously doing really well right now. They're just regardless of where Bitcoin is going, altcoins are getting the adoption. My portfolio's up like 200k. You know, uh, I didn't sell anything. I bought the dip. I leveraged up and bought the dip. And a lot of people in my group, as well as you guys on my YouTube channel, have been benefiting from that. Like we're making money right now. Um, even if you're still at a loss a little bit, like you should have bought the dip a little bit more aggressive. This is the beauty of buying a dip. You know, let's say hypothetically you lost 20% on this trade. If you bought the dip, you know, you don't have to wait for it to come back up 20% to make money, right? That's the beauty of buying a dip. It takes volatility and it makes it easier, right? So if we also look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, you, I drew this out like months ago, or no, was it months ago? It was like a couple weeks ago. It just took a little bit longer, but it looks like Bitcoin is going to, you know, break downside in the dominance chart. We're not going to go back to 50% dominance in my personal opinion. Now, this chart's really interesting. As you can see here, I basically compared all of the top like five layer ones. So I took Solana, Binance Coin or Binance Smart Chain Coin, ADA, Luna, and AVAX. Uh, and I compared it to Ethereum. So basically, when this chart goes up, that means that we have the top five layer one altcoins beating Ethereum. When this chart goes down, Ethereum is being the top five. So you can see we've just been on a rally up. And this adds to what I'm saying. Again, people are adopting altcoins at a rapid rate, right? They're submitting to the utility narrative. They're saying, hey, Bitcoin's too slow. You know, it's too expensive. It doesn't do anything. Let's move on to Ethereum. And then they're saying, oh, Ethereum's too slow. It's too expensive. It does stuff, but it's expensive. Let's move on to Solana, or let's move on to ADA, or let's move on to Luna. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful because it's kind of showing the evolution of like the human thought process in crypto, right? People are not dumb, right? They're understanding things, right? They're not being maximalist. I think this like maximalist concept is like a lot smaller than we think. I don't think there's really that many Bitcoin maximalists anymore. If we look at the metaverse index, you can see the metaverse has been benefiting. You know, I, I bring these charts up like almost every video on purpose uh, to show you guys that, you know, what we're doing here is playing out. Okay, I might not be perfect. I, I won't be able to call things on the head. But if you study this market long enough, you can definitely see where the trends are going. Um, you can see what's going on and, and you can act before anybody else. And that's how you make money, guys. It's called trend hacking. If we look at the total two, this is basically looking at every uh, market cap excluding Bitcoin. You can see that we're making a run for the next all-time high. Like, clearly, altcoins are benefiting the most. And if we look at the altcoin index, I don't, I don't really like this index too much, but if we scroll down, look at the altcoins that have been benefiting. And I've been screaming this in my videos, right? People are underestimating it. I even did the BitBoy interview, and I don't think he... Maybe I should have asked him a little bit more. Maybe he believes in it, but like he was still undershooting the metaverse in my personal opinion. I'm really, really bullish on the metaverse. I'm really, really bullish. Like, of course the layer ones are great, but look, sand, uh, um, loop ring. This is a layer two, right? We've been saying metaverse and layer two, right? Gala, metaverse, mana, metaverse, Shiba Inu. That's a community coin, okay? Um, CRO, that's, uh, you know, uh, crypto.com, right? Luna, layer one, Matic, layer two. HNT, this is like, um, this is kind of like a, a internet, right? But in general, you can see the vast majority of them are layer two, layer one, metaverse. So our narrative is playing out pretty well. Um, and if we look at the search term of metaverse, non-fungible token, Bitcoin, DeFi, and Shiba Inu, you can see that obviously Bitcoin is getting the most search volume and none of them have even gotten close. So this is all adding to the case that I, not only do I think uh, the bull run's not over, I do think that altcoin season is going to be uh, pretty lucrative, guys. When it does happen, um, you know, when we get retail coming in and we see these search terms, you know, increasing uh, in comparison to Bitcoin, and we see like more adoption on the altcoin side, uh, it's going to get pretty hectic. Uh, so hold on to your seat, guys. Hold on to your seat. Also, some recent news. You guys know, uh, you know, we said in our live stream, Uniswap comes to Polygon, sending Matic to record high. Matic's doing well. 
Um, you know, that's a big question for a lot of the layer ones uh, that they have to answer. Uh, why would people use uh, their layer one when they could just go to uh, Matic, which is integrated directly with Ethereum? That's a big question a lot of these layer ones gonna have. So don't be surprised as far, if I start getting rid of layer ones, uh, to be honest with you, because, you know, like I said, you know, they have, Ethereum has all the infrastructure, they have all the developers, um, you know, it's gonna be hard to compete with. Like, I, I get it, you know, there's, there's some layer ones that, are built better than Ethereum. You know, they, they take longer with building out the code. They're not gonna get hacked. They're more scalable, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if nobody uses it, right? So Ethereum, people are using Ethereum. And if they have an easy solution for people to bridge from Ethereum to Matic, Matic will probably get the adoption. Um, and I know this because Matic has the best TVL right now. As you can see, total TVL, 5.62 billion. And if you look at any other layer two, Matic's getting an adoption for sure. Matic is uh, winning. And they're also coming out with ZK rollups, which you guys know I'm super bullish on ZK rollups because of the nature of the tech. The technology is superior to any other layer two we've ever had. Pay attention to that. Let's jump into UFO gaming. So you can look at my portfolio here. I want to be very clear with you guys. This is not my complete portfolio. I have multiple accounts. I have like more than 10. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of accounts as well. This is cryptocurrency is crazy, but this is my high risk portfolio. This is like where I show fundamental secrets, my trades, right? This is like where I'm getting a little bit crazy. I'm not being safe, right? This is like the risk portfolio. And you can see that I have a lot of UFO. So I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I have 53,000 in comparison. So it's a high ratio. I do believe that UFO gaming is a little bit undervalued. Now, it's not, again, all rainbows and butterflies. I'm not gonna sit here and talk positive throughout the board because there are some negatives and downsides. But if we look at the all-time high, you can see that we have a pretty good leap to the all-time high. So it's not like I'm buying a top at all. Um, and I will say too, just to elaborate on this a little bit, my original investment into UFO was like less than 10 grand. Um, I took profit, <laughs> I took a lot of profit. I think I took like 30 Gs out and it's still this number. Uh, so I hold UFO partly because I believe in it, but also some of it is because I just made a lot of money off of it um, and it turned into that amount. So just. Take that into consideration because uh, I know a lot of people make investment decisions off my videos, even though this is not financial advice, people just do it anyways. So if we look at the website, it's pretty much doing what everybody else is doing uh, with the metaverse. They're coming out with the land sale. They have uh, the NFTs that can generate yield. They have DeFi in the metaverse. Their, I guess, theme is like a dark metaverse, um, but they're pretty much hitting all the check boxes for me. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because, you know, they've been pretty much doing what they said when it comes to uh, the roadmap. If we come to their roadmap, you could see that they have the light paper release, they've done all that. Um, and they actually just recently launched on KuCoin, so they're getting a centralized exchange liquidity, which is good. This is why the price uh, jumped in recent history. But look at quarter one of 2022. NFT minting, they're, they're coming out with the vast majority of everything, virtual land, PVP, PVE, multiplayer co-op with friends, official launch, beta release, this is what I'm waiting for with like a lot of the metaverse coins. Like we're all waiting for the launch, right? And once that happens, then I might take some profits, uh, but we still have good catalysts uh, for the price to increase. And if we come back to the actual market cap, it's not the smallest market cap, but 722 mil is a good uh, sweet spot in my personal opinion. It's like at a good spot to where it's not gonna dump, right? It might dump, don't get me wrong. Um, it's still small, okay? Uh, anything under 1 billion is pretty small. But, you know, it's not like a $100 million market cap. So it's relatively safe. It's a good sweet spot for me to put 50K. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, the website's pretty nice, but that's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, one of the biggest uh, things I think is really important about UFO is the fact that it's 100% community owned, okay? Uh, this is a big element in cryptocurrency. We see that coins, you know, any coin that does this, uh, that where they don't have like a, a seed investment f uh, phase or whatever the case is, it's usually a good thing, right? Because the community feels involved. They feel like uh, they actually own it. They feel like, you know, they can invest more because they own it. Uh, and we need this with a game, right? Because the whole point of a game is the community, right? Um, this is not like a super DeFi, you know, uh, you know, innovation in uh, finance. No, this is like communities adopting the game and playing it and investing more because they really believe in the game, right? So being community owned is a big thing for me. Um, they also are obviously integrating with Polygon, which is a big thing that I push for. If you are looking at a metaverse gaming token and it's not on some type of layer two, 
if it's not on Stark X or Stark Net, um, you know, or if it's not on a Polygon or some type of layer two scaling, like I pretty much will pass, okay? Because the gaming industry needs the high transaction speeds, guys, and the cheap costs, especially the cheap costs, because, you know, to mint these NFTs, to play these games, like it can't be expensive. It has to be almost free. There has to be like a free tier, right? So I'm glad that they're integrating with Polygon, which in my personal opinion is going to be the best, um, you know, layer two uh, because of the ZK roll-up technology that they're going to be coming out with and because of the liquidity they've already attracted. Uh, so this is a good thing. Now, this is the biggest problem with UFO gaming by far, okay? They are an anonymous team. And this is a problem for me. I even reached out to them to try to get them on an interview. They don't want to do it because they're anonymous. Um, but they've had a security audit uh, with their liquidity pools and stuff like that. And they're about to come out with some security audits for their actual game. Uh, so they've done their due diligence. Now, I just want to be clear with you guys um, when it comes to security audits, they are not foolproof. There's been so many different times where there's security audits that come out that have bugs in them. So this is like my biggest problem is we need to point the fingers at someone, right? I, I don't want to get rug pulled by an unknown entity. So UFO community, let's push the founders of this coin to not be anonymous, right? Reach out to the founders, go to the Discord, go to the Telegram, tell them to come on an interview. And they don't have to show their face or their identity. They just come talk to us, right? You could even have somebody else speak for you and you could type, right? But let's get this guy out of it because I'll endorse it more. They did not pay me, by the way. Nobody pays me. You guys know I don't accept sponsorships for nothing. But it would make me way more confident if we had someone to point the fingers at if there was something that went wrong, okay? Hopefully they, they're they not gonna rug pull us, right? Um, if there's something happens, we need someone to point a finger at it. And I think having an actual leader of a project is really important, even though you take all the security measures with audits from uh, hacking the IO and you're, you know, you're auditing the game. To me, that's not enough. And it would give me way more confidence. I'll probably invest more and talk about UFO a little bit more if we had uh, the founders come out public. But yeah, that's my only criticism. Pretty much everything else uh, looks good. It looks good, and I'm saying this because they don't have the game, um, but they're getting adoption. The community looks outstanding. It's growing, it's big. They have like 100 and something K followers on Twitter. Um, so, you know, I have good hopes. And, and if I see anything negative, I'll let you guys know. If I see any red flags, you know, I'll probably sell. Keep in mind, guys, my portfolio is big in profit, you know, when it comes to UFO. So it's not pressing to me, like I don't need to sell it. Uh, but usually, just to be clear, with anonymous founder, I wouldn't have invested as aggressive, in my personal opinion. If I had to start from zero and I never bought UFO, this would definitely turn me off, okay? So that's the biggest problem with UFO. Everything else looks really good to me. They have a big community. They're hitting the right niche. They're going layer two, um, you know, they're 100% community owned. Uh, you guys let me know in the comment section below if there's any other red flags or if there's any other uh, benefits that I missed out on. I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Again, head on over to my Twitter. If I get a thousand retweets, I will buy more UFO and then I'll probably sell it. Just kidding. I'm not going to dump on my following. Of course not. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.